As soon as you create a brand new workspace, you are brought to this welcome view. And the welcome view, as you can see, has a lot of different topics, learning topics that you can click on to learn more about the product itself. PDM and SEU and R, uh, to RSE and uh, LPEX editor transition, how to debug an ILE application, how to create an I project, which is let you work offline, team support workbench basically, which is also a good utility in and of itself, and of course, how to use RPG and COBOL development tools for I. RSC, I projects again offline, application development, screen designer. I'm going to close this view by now by clicking on this. You can always come back to the welcome screen just by clicking on help, but I just did now. Click on help in the welcome screen, and you'll be right be brought right back to where I just was. So I'll close that for now. This is an out of the box, brand new um, workspace on the Remote System Explorer. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on IBM I for new connection and that should open up new connection right there. I'm going to type in my host name which is 10.100.10.190. I'm going to call this video connection. I'll say finish and I should now have there's my video connection click on properties I should be able to right click on this right now which I just did go to properties and I'm going to say you can see there's, there's my host connection right there in my subsystems I'm going to say I want to have devlib added into this session as soon as I create it think of this as a client access session so in this one session I can have different library lists I can have job descriptions different using uh, profiles different um, initial commands to run different current lib so I'm going to say dev lib will be my will be added to my library list automatically here's my RSC getting started again this this I can open up later I'm going to close it for now here's my video connection again let me close this and I'm just going to come here and right click on video connection say connect change my user ID to C Guarino type in my password and you'll notice here immediately I, I'll get a right a green arrow pointing to the right that means that this connection is now open again tantamount to a an active client access session if I just come right here the first thing you might want to do is you want to make sure you have a good connection now I'm not talking about a good connection meaning that I have an open connection you want to verify your connection to the eye to make sure that you have all the necessary PTFs on your on the remote system side so I've just done verify connection this window pops up and what it's done is it, it has now verified on the eye itself that I have all the proper PTFs in place if I did not have the PTFs in place I would have gotten uh, unsuccessful here and it would have told me which PTFs needed to be added. I clicked OK and just like PDM if I click on click on this little green arrow, this little pointing arrow work with members I'll get a screen that looks that should look very familiar to you. So I'll put in devlib here. I'll put QRPG LE source and I'm going to put a little filter here. I'm going to say only show me programs that begin with UPD and I'll say next and I'll just say I'll say uh, I can call this now this filter I'm gonna say programs in devlib beginning with UPD I'll say finish there's my filter you can see it to the right there I'll open that up and these are all my programs just like PDM as if I had done that in uh, in PDM. So I can now just double click on any one of these and that will open up that source member. I can either double click on it or I can right click on it and say open with LPEX. LPEX being the editor instead of instead of SCU, LPEX editor. Because this is Eclipse, Eclipse is totally customizable. I'm just going to left click on this tab here and you can see that I can pull it anywhere I want. I can put it here if I well rather let me do that again I can if I want an object table up here I can do that I don't know why it would want to do that but any tab I want I can hit properties I can put my tab, properties tab over here if I want and of course if I just come to window I can always say reset my perspective 
and that will put it right back to how it was out of the box. But it's customizable. You should really play around with that to make it more usable for your for your requirements. Because it's Eclipse, any tab I double click on will expand that to a full screen. Let me do that now. Here's, I just double clicked on Update Average 2, and now you see the entire program. Much better than SCU, we have to keep paging down. The entire program is available, and it's available via scroll. Uh, a couple of quick things I want to show you here. On Filter View, immediately I can just right-click anywhere in the source. Source, I can say Filter View, and I can say just show me the code. And you can see what's happened here is now the comments have all been edited out, and I and have I have pure code. Think about how helpful this might be if somebody had put a stray asterisk in column seven somewhere in the code, and you hear you are trying to debug your code or look at your code, figuring it out, and you miss that single little asterisk there. You might think that that's a live line of code, and it's not. So by filtering out just your true lines of code, it may make you it may make your development simpler. Of course, I can also say filter view, which I guess did right click, filter and just show me the comments. So if you have a, if you have a work in a shop where people do keep their comments current, this could be very helpful for you. And of course, I can just say show all that puts everything back up again. There are a couple other filter views. Filter view, you can say just show me Subroutines, if you have your subroutines, just show me control. Control, of course, is a control block, which is a do statement. It might be a, an if statement, a select statement, a for statement, anything that might alter the control of that code from top to bottom. And here's show all again. I should be able to see all my code again. There it is. And I'm just now clicking around on the different things here. You notice I can I can come to any line that has a, a letter in front of it like this and press F4 and that will prompt the line. What's nice here is that if here there are keywords, I have cursor sensitive help and the system know LPEX is very aware, completely aware of where the cursor is and what spec it's on. So if I just press F1 here, what'll ha happen here is I just pressed F1 and a browser should open up. It takes a little bit of time the very first time, as I just did, but all of the valid keywords for wherever the cursor is will appear. So information data structure, let's say, or subroutine, either one. Let's say I want to learn more about that. Just click on that, and I have complete RPG language reference built right into the product. Just double, I can double click and get, get out of there. Any line you click on, does turn blue. I guess right clicked on this line here and now you see where it says show fields. It recognizes, LPEX recognizes that this is an F spec and that it's an externally defined file. So when I say show fields, I just right clicked on it and click on that now, it just opens up a field view, field table view, which I can now pull up. And these are all the fields. I'm just using a little scroll bar here and you can see all the different fields with their length and their text. That's very helpful. I can just close it and open it up anytime I want. That's very helpful if you're coding, a, 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 you're coding and you forget the names of the fields that are in a particular table. That also qualifies um, a display file is also a, a uh, will work. You, you, it will show you the fields in a display file as well. And again, the D specs the, that's a line with a letter in front. I can press F4. I can prompt that. And of course, F1 in the keywords the same thing. And you notice now the keywords are different here because it, I'm on a D spec, not the F spec. So these are valid D spec words, and I can click on any one of these again. It'll tell me more about that particular keyword. So that's very nice. All of my SCU commands that you're used to will work. So if I can say repeat two here, and that will re repeat that spec, that's kind of nice. Control Z, which is a Windows undo. Here's Control Z. You'll notice when I just did that, those two lines went away. You also see that right now in the tab here, update average, there's nothing between that pencil and UPD. The moment I change any line of code here, let's say I add one line of code, I repeat that line, you see I have an asterisk there. That means that now I have now what's called a dirty editor. And a dirty editor simply means that I have a modified source code of a source program in my LPEX editor that has not been saved to my disk. 
if I control Z out of there, you notice that oops, you notice that the asterisk went away, and now I have back to my original back to my original um, unmodified state. I'm going to add an if a couple of lines of code here. I'm going to say repeat to just make a couple of blank lines here, and here I'm going to say if C program run equals one, I'll come over there and I'll put an if statement over here, an else over here rather, else, and I'll come over here. I, I, I like having a lot of white space in my programs and if. So immediately if I come to this line right here and I right click and say source and I say show block nesting, what it's going to do is if you click on any line that is a control block. Again, a control block is a do statement, a um, if statement, a select statement. It, you can you can click on show block nesting and it will give you on the right side the actual nesting of those particular statements that are embedded in there. Think about if you have a very nasty, very deeply embedded if, uh, if statement, the whole nest of if statements, nested if statements. This can be remarkably helpful for you. So that's always good to know. That's nice. Now that I've now that I have um, added a couple of lines of code, I want to see if my code is now valid. I'm going to now press Control Shift Control V, and what that's going to do here, Shift Control V, and what Shift Control V is, it's going to run a quasi compile on my code as it sits on my editor today. And you see, I have an event, an error list here saying contains no errors. That tells me that this program is now ready for compile. Let's say I want to change this to, obviously I can't have a line of code here with two, two, di two digits with four decimals. So I'm getting the, Alpex is already embedding the error message in here, but if I do shift con um, control shift V again, there's that same error message. If I double click on it, the editor brings me directly into that line of code. So if I have a lot, if I have a lot, a lot of errors on a particular program, I can just keep right, I can just keep clicking from the error list, go back to the line in the code, fix it, and I have not gone to my remote system at all. So that's very nice, and I'm able to actually work offline, and I can code, let's say, while sitting in an airplane. Now that I've made my changes. I can come here and say file, I can say save, or save as a different name. If I just save it, that'll work. Or if I just decide to close it, it will recognize that, it will, that it's been changed as well, and it's going to say, do you want to save channel? I'll say yes. And now I've just saved that member, and now there it is again. So immediately, so within five minutes, I was, ten minutes, I was completely up. I was able to edit a code, edit a source member, remarkably easy.